Hello there, fellow programmers, and welcome to another episode of Dumb as Code. I am your host, Chris Franklin. Okay, today what we're going to do is we're going to dig into the world of GUI programming in Python, and we're going to use a library called PyQt5. Now, PyQt5 is a wrapper around the Qt library, which is a C++ set of libraries used for building uh, graphical user interfaces across multiple platforms. So you can build it in uh, Windows and run it in Mac and run it in Linux. It runs across all of them. So Python is a wonderful wrapper around it that will allow us to build these GUI applications much faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, I, I like to use um, PyCharm if you follow this channel. So um, I've got a PyCharm project up and running, ready to go uh, with a virtual environment already established. If you don't have that, go ahead and set up a virtual environment and get ready because here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to use Python 3. Um, don't use anything older because uh, we're not all ancient here in this, uh, in this world anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and use... Uh, pip install and then all we have to do is we install qt5 now this comes with all the c++ uh, uh, gpl code that we need embedded into it um, inside of the wheel so this is going to bring down everything that we need all in one package uh, there are other packages that we can install uh, that will in, uh, increase the functionality here. We can in install the tools and get a nice um, graphical designer that we can use. But for now, we're just going to stick to a really basic window. So we don't need any of that extra stuff. So once you have PyQt5, you can close the, uh, the terminal window here. And now uh, let's start with an import. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to import from uh, PyQt5 and we're going to come from the Qt widgets class okay inside of this package we're going to specifically import uh, Q application Q widget Q push button and um, just because we're gonna have a little fun here we're gonna also include the Q message box okay now all of these um, you don't need all of these. You can bring in everything if you want to, however you want to do it. Um, this is just going to allow us to build a pretty basic window. We're going to have a single button in it, and we're also going to have a warning box that pops up before you close, just to make sure, do you really want to close or not? Just to show you what you some of the power of what you can do with this. All right, now I like to use the, the if under domain um, block down here to launch my code, and so... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set up a function uh, that we're going to call run. This is going to contain uh, the main loop of my application. Uh, now to set up the run function, we're going to just set up an app and um, we can pass in um, the arguments, the command line arguments if we want to here, uh, but I'm going to just pass in an empty array because I don't want to, I don't want to mess with passing in any of the arguments. We don't need that right now. And um, then all you need to do is call app.exec and this will actually set up the queue application and then execute it. And then in here in our done domain function, we can say, um, we can just call run here. Okay. So this is super bare bones, super basic. Um, but this will get us started with a basic application window and execute. Now at this point, there's not, nothing's really going to happen. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Nothing actually shows up on the window. There is no window being attached here. All it is, is just an empty application shell. Okay. So, um, we're going to kill this and, uh, then we're going to go in and, um, create our, our actual window here. Now I like to use the class oriented design for this just to organize all of the different components of my GUI. So we're going to use that as our methodology here. We're going to create a uh, class for our main widget, which is going to be the window that gets displayed. Uh, and we're just going to call this example for now, uh, because that's what it is. Uh, and we extend the Q widget, uh, which we've already brought in up above. Uh, in here we have to do the dunder init and we call super dunder init and um, once we do that we can come down here 
and we can say um, our example application is going to be equal to example here. Okay. Now, if we run this, um, yep, it looks like it's still not going to show. Oh, it's still not going to show anything because I didn't set the size. It's zero. It's nothing. There's nothing to show. Okay. Sorry. Let's let's actually sh let's fix that. Um, let's actually set the size here. Um, let's let's do a setup function. Sometimes the best way to learn is just by messing up, huh? Def, uh, and we're going to call this setup. If I could spell too, this would be fantastic. Okay, and then inside of here, all we're going to do is we're going to say self self dot set geometry. Now, what this will allow us to do is set the um, position of the window, its uh, x, y coordinates, and its width and height. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say we're going to set from 100, 100. Now, what this does uh, is it sets uh, the coordinate system of your monitor is from the top left. So 0, 0 is your top left, uh, and then your bottom right is 1920. Uh, by 1080, right? So, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to count uh, 100 pixels to the left and 100 pixels down, and that's about where your window is going to start. Okay, and then we're just going to give it a, a random width. So we're going to say 200 by uh, 150. Okay, make sure you actually use commas here and not periods. And then, so that's going to be the geometry. And then we're going to say um, self dot set window title and we're going to say this is our window example and finally the reason it didn't show up before because we forgot to show it <laughs> that's it that's all that's the line right there that actually makes a difference so we create the queue widget and then we say show it we run this now and it's going to of course it's going to show up on my other monitor over here but here here's the actual window this is what it looks like now you just have an empty window with a title on it. It is 200 by 150 pixels. And I know you can see it because it popped up on my other window, but it showed up right about here on the screen. Okay. Pretty straightforward and simple. Now, when you click the X button there, you notice it goes away. The, the application actually ends. That's some of the magic that, uh, when the QT does for us automatically under the hood by using the Q application and the Q widget. It, takes care of all of that for us. Now we're going to plug into that later and when we play with this a little bit. So um, get ready for that. That'll be fun. Now what can we do here? Um, we can make this a little bit more exciting. Let's add a button. Okay. Inside of our setup function here at the very top, what we're going to do is we're going to create a button and let's make this a quit button. Okay. Q push button and we pass Q push button two arguments. Force, first we pass it the label that gets put onto the button. So I'm going to say this is my force quit button. Okay. And um, then we have to give it the parent. What do we want to attach this button to? So we're going to attach it to self, which in this case is the Q widget window that gets shown. Okay. Um, and then we can set a couple of properties of this. Now, We'll have another tutorial later to actually explain what this is doing, um, what sockets are, and uh, why and how we actually connect into them, and all the slots and all that fun event handling stuff. But for now, just know this bit of magic right here uh, is going to be calling um, the Q application instances quit function, and we're connecting that function to the clicked event on the button. Okay, so we're using the slot that exists on this button, and then we're connecting any event into that slot. Okay, that's all we're doing. So when you click the button, we're going to call quit. Uh, we can also do a couple things to make this just look a little nicer. We can resize the button using um, the size hint. Uh, what this does uh, is this says, based off of how big I'm drawing things, how big should I resize this thing? It's going to try and draw the button to the appropriate size. And finally, we have to actually tell the button where to draw. Otherwise, it'll just stick it into the top left corner, which is fine. But uh, we're trying to demonstrate all the functionality here. So we'll, we'll put this down towards the bottom right, uh, 90 by 100 of a 200 by 150 
uh, square. So if we save this and run it, it's going to show up in my other window again um, on my other screen. But here we go. Um, here's the actual window. You can see now we have a force quit showing up here on the bottom right. What's going to happen if I click this? Oh, the program exited exactly as we expected it to using the slot here. Okay. So pretty straightforward. Um, but as I said, that uh, event system that's built into the Q widget, we can actually plug into it as well. So just to give you a taste of some of the additional things you can do with this framework, we're going to overwrite the close event, which is part of the Qt GUI. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in, we're just going to say event. I don't know why this did all this fun stuff. We don't need any of that. Um, so here we go. So we're going to go def close event. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the reply from a Q message box. Uh, and we're going to ask a question inside of our Q message box. Now all we have to do here is we have to pass in the parent, which again, we're using this window as the parent. Uh, and then um, we have to pass in the title of the box, the text for the question. So are you sure you want to quit? And then from here, we need to pass in two things. Now you can see in the helper text above, the buttons is a union of standard buttons. And then the default button is the one that's highlighted by default. So those are the last two arguments that we can set here. So we're going to hit new line here so that we don't go off the, the edge and we can keep our code looking pretty nice. And what we're going to say is um, Q message box dot yes and Q message box dot no. Those are the two standard buttons that we can pass in. Those, those come already defined for us and then we can say our default is going to be q message dot no okay now we can use this we can say if the reply is equal to q message box dot yes we'll go ahead and accept the event that gets passed in here um, otherwise we'll ignore it Okay. Now this is just another way to show you how you can hook into an, the closed system of Qt. So when we run this, again, we'll bring this over to the right window here. And now what I can do is I can hit the X button, and now it'll pop up this message box anchored over the top of of this down here. And now I can't click down and get access to the application underneath because this is the parent of the message box. Now if I click no, it won't let me leave. If I click yes, it'll exit the application. So that's it. That's a really quick run through of some of the power of PyQt5. Hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in future lessons where we'll dig into some of the nitty gritty details of how to build more complicated graphical user interfaces using Python with the power of Qt behind it. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you later.